<laughs> Little kids running around, yo, we could do this, yo. <laughs> and you wanna hear something about invention, when you give little kids an impossible, a seemingly impossible task, they create other stuff along the way. They discover themselves along the way trying to get to the impossible task. This is again the purpose for God. The purpose for an infinite being in your mind is so that you never get tired of yourself. <laughs> that there's always something for you to reach for, always something for you to go, something always exciting. God is always one step ahead. But no, not if you're a scientist. <laughs> if you're a scientist, the universe is dead. It is a thing, it's not organic. It is something that its laws, once understood, can be controlled. And what's so interesting is this new science, or not new now, but this new talk on quantum mechanics or quantum physics. I'm gonna end now, I'm going off. Um, but I'll say this about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, is that it's said, said in, in the quantum theory that if you look at an atom, it's fixed in one position. But if you turn your back on an atom, it's in superposition. Meaning that atom, the, the world of atoms, uh, the atomic structure of, of material reality, atoms are outside of space. Certain atoms can be in China and in America, and if you affect one, the, the minute you hit one, another one, the, the, the same thing you did to this one will happen to this one. They call it being co-located. This idea of atoms not being in fixed positions in space, meaning that if I'm not looking at an atom, it's everywhere, it's in superposition. It could be anything and be anywhere until I look at it. Once I look at it, the observer collapses the atomic structure and it becomes whatever my perception tells the atom to be. This is called sight. Everyone knows that sight is not out there. Sight is in here. Sight happens in the brain, which really happens in the mind. And so the reason I bring this to the reason I bring this up is because quantum mechanics says that the observer is creating the reality that the observer observes. So scientists are saying the brain creates reality. That there's no reality out here. Reality is in here. This is what science is that reality is in here. So if reality is in here and you're a racist, what kind of reality are you going to project? And project to yourself only. Look how fast God is way faster than scientists. God says, I'll play with you guys for a little longer. Y'all trying to figure out the universe through mathematics and all of that. Okay, here's how I'm gonna do y'all. I'm gonna show y'all quantum mechanics. Basically, I'm gonna show you a mirror. They don't realize that the universe is alive. How can there be life in the universe and the universe itself not be? How can a dead thing create a live thing? The universe is alive and it thinks. We are it. We're it. Right, right now the universe is talking to itself. Having a conversation with itself right now for whatever purpose it wants to fulfill. So scientists trying to use Galileo's equations, mathematics is the, is the language of the universe. That's wrong. Galileo's wrong on that. What, was real, what is the real language of the universe is intention. This is what the universe is really looking at, intention. And we got that now through genetic science. I'm giving you these titles, so when you leave, do the study, do the follow-up research. Genetics, the genome,
people are realizing now that your environment is way more important than even your culture. That, you're, that the environment you're in, your genes are responding to the environments that you're in. Imagine that. That everything you do as a human, there's a tiny, 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 tiny little organism running around that does the exact same thing. And let me say it, let me, put, let me put it to you this way so you can really see it. You are only a collection of cells. You should really spell it as C-E-L-F. Cell. Because what the self is, is the consciousness of cells. Cells reproduce, <laughs> they talk, they have waste, they have a job and a function. Every cell knows what it's supposed to do. These are little thinking beings. And when they unite, they make you. The way you think is what they are thinking. When you say, I'm hungry, it's not you that's hungry. It's your cells that are hungry. You are the slave of your higher self, C-E-L-F. You are the servant of your higher self until you become your higher self, then you're free. This is why they say you are born a slave. You are, you're a slave to yourself. You're a slave to the addictions that your cells want. You're a slave to the made up realities of your language. You're a slave to your fears and this kind of thing. Once you realize that I am the eternal immortal being that speaks without this body, has existence without time and space. Once you really know that, you start moving like that. And then reality starts playing with you. You start reading things right in the nick of time. Some message comes to you right off the wall. Nobody else see it. You're the only one to see it. Why? Because your perception is such. This is how you get over. This is how you get past. This is how you compete. Never compete is how you compete. The ancient way. This is the ancient, ancient way. You don't compete. That's, that's the English way. The way of nature is cooperation. Everything works in cooperation. 